good morning back to more planning for the flower garden show it has actually been an eventful couple days i've received well some interesting news i was going to use this yellow crocus um, yellow mammoth crocus as part of the show and we have recently had a cold freezing snap in the Northwest. And what ended up happening is they had animals get into the hoop house where they were warming up these crocuses to be ready for the show. And they decimated every single last one of them. So that was one piece of it. And then the tulips that, one of the varieties of tulips it is a, um, gosh, orange cassini is the one that I was gonna use. And I got a call that those are not gonna be ready either. So I'm gonna switch gears this morning. I'm gonna head up to TNL, which is one of my commercial nurseries. Um, I'm gonna check on the bulb situation and then pull some other little tidbits that I'm gonna see if I can force into flower. We only have three weeks, so big adventure day today. I will keep you posted and off we go. You can see behind me on the floor the remnants of the massive crocus disaster. The first things that they went after were the yellow mammoth crocus and I had ordered 60 of these. Now until this moment I thought I just they were just off off the list um, but I managed to find 10 which makes me so incredibly happy. So these are going to the show with me. Um, I kind of love that I get like a little something that not everyone's gonna have so I feel very good um, the next one they're going after is the purple anyways we have more treasures to find off we go okay this is another one of my favorite plants this is an oak leaf primrose I love it because it's just a little bit more unique it has these beautiful upright florals and they're a little bit more like uniquely star shaped you're gonna see a lot of like this variety and a lot of the singulars I'll show you a photo of that um, these are the ones you commonly see at the grocery store but this this fits the vibe it fits the energy of the garden I'm creating and with the shift in tulip I'm bringing in a little bit of that purple and so getting just a little bit of this coloring coming through although we're working with a magenta as opposed to a purple it's very close to the same family so I think it's going to tie it all together okay the other thing I was looking at you gotta follow me this okay how sexy is this are you kidding right now are you are you joking me this is so freaking beautiful, that rich, 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 gorgeous combination, the pop of yellow. It's everything I love in a garden. It's moody, it's joyful, it's a little unexpected. Um, so I believe this little combination is coming to the show with me too. Okay, we are out in the field now at TNL. This is actually a really beautiful glimpse at a commercial nursery. So this isn't gonna be a nursery that you're gonna go to to pick up a couple plants if you're a homeowner, but this is, this is our world. This is where we love to shop. And before the show, what I like to do is I want to show something that's a little unexpected. I want to show something that's going to bloom maybe at a time that you wouldn't expect it. And so this is where I really utilize the grow light setup in my house. One of the plants that I have my eye on for just a little extra orange punch is actually a beautiful, beautiful perennial. It's called GM. Um, I was talking to the ladies in the front office the other day and I said, could you just see if you have anything butted up? And she's like, yeah, it was actually blooming before the frozen kind of like weather swooped in. Um, and so we're gonna see what's left out here. I actually feel like it's pretty promising, uh, but I'm gonna have to like dive through the holes in this plastic because obviously they have all these hoops set up for protection. So I'm going to kind of peek in down the line to see what we've got going on. All right, guys, so this is what I'm looking for. Um, I'm probably going to choose something with maybe tighter, uh, tighter leaves because I want to give it room to grow. But you can see right here, the frost has killed some of these, but then check it out right here. That bud I'll probably pinch off because it's had those tender, tender little edges frozen. But this, 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 I think I have a very, and look right here, I think I've got a very good chance of getting this to flower before the show. I don't think I'm going to be able to get in here. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get my feet. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, I can't believe I'm in here, but here we are. 
Uh, this is so exciting. So I'm actually seeing a lot of beautiful growth in here. The reason I wanted to actually get in here is so that I can pick from those in the center because they're gonna be the warmest and they're gonna have the most protected buds. So I'm gonna kind of dig through, see what I can find, and hopefully I can get maybe a dozen or so that will be just gorgeous for the show. These look real good. So probably what I'm gonna need to do is take a minute to sift and see what I can come up with. This is really hard to move around in here. Some of these pots are frozen like a little popsicle. Ugh. I need ones that are really bud well budded if I have a hope and a prayer. If I fall in here, there's gonna be no one to rescue me. Oh, oh, okay. That one might be good. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five. God, this is all such a crap shoot. Okay, I'm gonna try to find a couple more. Now, oh, this is taking a little bit of digging because I want them to already have set buds because I think that's gonna give me my best chance. I think if I get something that has beautiful foliage but no buds on it, I am like in an uphill battle to get it to bloom in the next three weeks. I mean, I've done crazier things. Worst case scenario, I have some extra GM on my hands, um, but I do wanna give myself like a real good shot and not waste money in the process. Ugh. This is really silly that I'm doing this. Or is this amazing? Actually, this one has some buds coming on too. I want people to be like tickled that they're seeing something crazy in bloom. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more. I want one that is just like chunky chunky and I'm just not seeing it right now. I hope you're getting all this grunting. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I think I'm gonna get the one that Renee saved for me up in the front office because it looks better than any of these and she's had it warming up for two days. So, now I just gotta get out of here. Ooh. Okay. Oh my gosh. My butt. <laughs> so what I'm doing right now is there is a cornice do aka dogwood that I want to use I'm just checking availability at my other nursery just to see what they've got going on because there's only a handful left here at the nursery and when I'm using a when I'm using a cornice in this garden, and I know it's not gonna have leaves on it, I'm really using it for that sensational bark color. I, form becomes important, you know? And this is gonna tie into the, the, um, the seminar I do on year-round interest in the garden, like building a dynamic garden, is you really want to take a look at what does your winter form look like? And so I'm not gonna choose this actually when it has a bunch of green leaves on it because I can't see the form. The form is king when you're choosing some of your winter interest plants. So my other nursery only has Arctic fire. Here's the scoop, Arctic fire, totally beautiful. But you're gonna get more of that red statement. And this one, if you kind of zoom in, you'll notice that it starts out with this beautiful orangey. It almost is like salmony peachy a little bit in the middle. And then as you come out towards the end, this is where you get some additional brightness. So when I combine this with my orange tulips, um, with my yellow daffodils, with, with my white daffodils, this becomes just a number one stunner. So anyway, so I'm gonna choose a few carefully and let me actually show you what I'm looking for. Okay, let's choose, let's just look at these two because they're literally side by side. This is the same plant, but you could not be more different in form. And so I'm not gonna choose this because it's gonna take me years to retrain this well, probably not years, maybe like two years to retrain this into a shape that I enjoy versus this. This is the same plant. Look at this volume. This is like, this is beautiful. So I am 100% all day, every day going to choose something like this because then I get to play with bulbs kind of like coming up through this beautiful winter structure. I mean, this is going to be 
sensational. I think this is it. This is a ticket. Again, this is another example. Do you see how I have this like beautiful vase shape? We're not looking at a singular trunk. We are, we're looking at just like beautiful volume. This is Salix Mount Asso. I love this. The catkins are so yummy. Here's the thing though. They are already so well formed and based on how my Salix performed last year at the show, and I'm sorry, common name, Willow. We're, we're looking at a bunch of Willows here. These are the catkins. These are sensational. They're lovely. They're beautiful in floral arrangements, all the things. However, do you see how well developed these buds are? And they're this, they're really, like I said, this is like yummy, gorgeous color. This is so beautiful. But here's my fear. I really want to get this when everything is in this stage, right? So like these will continue to bud out, but these ones are gonna be completely blown open. And I know that this is gonna be a pollen hot mess at the show. I think I'm gonna pass. I really wanted this. However, it's next to this little friend. And I'm looking at this going, this is this could be this is could be sensational. Okay, I'm gonna bring you around. This is Sambucus. Okay, this is an elderberry. Um, I love the deep foliage. There's a lot of like um, you see like black lace elderberry that kind of stuff. Um, it's an ornamental. It's an edible. It's an edimental. Um, if you read my article from HGTV, it'll be in there. Um, I love an edimental. And look at this foliage. Even with that insane freeze we had, it is starting to unfurl and you get this like feathery, beautiful leaf. And also look down at the base here. This thing is popping out growth right and left. Now, when you do a flower and garden show, you have to play a lot with mother nature. And if a plant shows me this, that it's already breaking dormancy, this is like, this is perfection. Like this is really, this is gonna be a number one stunner. And so I think I may get this to incorporate into my edible tea garden. This is really exciting. What do I do? Okay. Cause I need, I want a couple like center PC moments for like the outside. But I also think that this could be great with the edible cause you can make like elderberry wine, elderberry extract. This could be really, really good. Really, really good. Already I'm super excited. There's some beautiful selections here. I was just talking to Nancy, the owner of Big Trees, and we were going through the concept of the garden and how I want it to be this just yummy immersive experience. And she's already pointing out some things that I'm, I'm dying over. There's some incense cedar. Um, there's some dog furs. There's even some sequoias here, which I've never landscaped with sequoias. And I, but I, but I enjoy the energy of a sequoia. So we're going to kind of cruise through. It is a muddy, muddy mess. Um, I may be flagging today. I'm probably going to take some measurements because I want to make sure I'm staying within my dimensions. Um, but I can't wait to see just what, what hits me. Okay, so this is an incense cedar. What do we think of this? Hmm. Okay, I think I need incense cedar for sure. Okay, so this is Amelanchier Autumn Brilliance. And my goal here is potentially, it's such an early bloomer, I. I'm thinking of including this because I think it might actually force inside the convention center. Going in. Hmm. Okay, this is a giant sequoia. I love this tree. I probably wouldn't choose this one because it's got a little bit of brown in the, in the inside. Um, it's probably just a little bit of stress because it hasn't been planted for a while. But look at this bark. That bark is so beautiful. It's 
smells fantastic. I don't think this is the right vibe. Um, it's a Lawson Cypress. It's beautiful, but we're not gonna see these in our neck of the woods. So I, I think this is a no-go for me, but I love the structure. Okay, so Doug first. I secretly wonder what I could get away with in terms of bringing Doug furs into the convention center. This might be an insane thing for me to even think about, but I like the concept. Okay, look at, these are stunning. Look at this thing. How tall? 14 to 16 feet. Jeez. I mean, this sucker is seven feet wide. That's big. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god! <gasps> god, she's cute! Oh my god. Look at this shaggy little nugget. Oh my god. That is cute. That is real cute. She's real cute. It's an Austrian pine. What? <laughs> I keep almost falling. I gotta get out of the trees. I'm about. <laughs> no, you, no, no. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna fall over. I'm gonna, honey, you have to help me. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. No, don't pull me, don't pull me. <laughs> oh my god oh my god do you want to see how close it was to getting water in my boot look <gasps> look at this thing So I have a love-hate relationship with Leylands. Um, a lot of people use them for formal hedging. You can shear them really easily, but their growth rate is insane. Um, also, it's really hard to plant anything at their roots because they are such a water monster. They literally soak up everything. But if you've got property for it, it's not a terrible thing. Okay, so uh, it is incredibly rainy and gross out there. We've just finished our walk through the nursery. And my initial thoughts are this. Number one, I love an incense cedar. I think it also matches the energy of the garden I'm trying to create. Uh, the Doug fir, I, I love it because it's so native to where we are. And I, I think it adds a certain fragrance that is going to be really important because I'm creating a garden that really is for the senses. And so I'm really liking that. The other thing I'm loving is the amelanchier. It's the shape that I want. I feel like it's the size I want. It's a good one. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to go to the drawing board. I'm going to sketch some things out and see where I land. Uh, but all in all, this was incredibly exciting. We went to Big Trees last week and I found some really gorgeous, gorgeous items. Now, I can't borrow everything that I'm looking for, however, I do have another commercial nursery too. This is Plants Northwest. This is where I commonly get a lot of my big items. So think if I'm doing a garden, anything that's like five gallons or larger, trees, this is where I love to come. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a couple of different things. I'm looking for some beautiful texture. I'm looking for something maybe unexpected. Um, and I'm looking for good shape too. So this is actually one of the things I've been looking at this is a camas cypress and it has these like this is the pendula and you can kind of see this like droopy moody kind of just like very flowy a little bit you know it almost feels a little bit more feminine and with the incense cedars that i'm using that's a very upright form and so something like this will give off a beautiful scent and also be a nice contrast so i've got my eye on this um, I've got some flagging tape just in case I see something that is like a must have for the show. I talked to the guys and they said they would hold product for me, which is amazing.
I want to create this moment where you really can't see the back wall of the convention center. So my display is gonna be up against the back wall and really it's a priority to have people feel like they are truly in the middle of a forest. This may just be a good filler plant, but it's not, it's not my first choice. Let's talk about these little babies for a second. Now, I'm at a bit of an impasse. I really want to bring a Doug fir into the convention center. However, it can sometimes shock the plant and it will kill it, which I'm not a huge fan of. And so I, I'm trying to figure out how many I can take on and then baby, because the goal is to have all of these plants live and go on to new homes. Whoa. <laughs> it's like, are you just gonna do a highlight reel of me falling on stuff? Okay, nothing makes me happier than seeing a bunch of boxwoods all in a row. Look at this situation. Oh my gosh, is this a bird's nest spruce? Misses something. This is gorgeous. Yeah, Picea pungens. Good morning. We are headed out to Marinaco's Rock Center this morning. They are one of the incredible show sponsors and they carry such a wide variety of granites, basalts, just beautiful, beautiful stone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see what they have. I am doing somewhat of a more challenging garden this year from a rock perspective because I'm trying to emulate these forests of the Pacific Northwest. I don't want to do a man-made border. I'm going to do a man-made walkway, um, but I don't want to do a man-made border, which means I need a lot of lineal feet of basalt, granite, uh, seeding areas. So I'm going to head out there and see what I can find. Okay, we just finished pulling rock and it has been quite the adventure. I'm trying to do something a little bit different. It's not that it's not in my wheelhouse, but it's definitely more organic than a lot of my gardens because I play in the city a lot. So in any event, we've just spent the last two hours with Ryan out at Marinacos and we have been picking the most beautiful granite and some basalt columns for the perimeter and then working in some really beautiful ledge stone that I think is going to I think all three are gonna play with the just really natural elements. The granite in the middle, I wanted it to be this like bright little pop. Okay, so we are really raining now. Uh, behind me, we have just this beautiful stack of basalt columns. What's really amazing about the basalt columns is they lend just like a beautiful grounded element to the landscape. So I have selected a number of these to surround the perimeter of my garden. The garden I'm displaying is huge. In case you didn't catch it earlier, it's 40 feet by 25 feet. So I do need to cover quite a bit of distance. And I think these are gonna fit the bill. And then we're also gonna play with how these actually marry up together because they aren't perfectly flat. This is natural rock we're working with. So you'll see me get creative with some stacked stones, some moss, some little logs going to be good. Okay, so I have a couple of moments on the interior of the display where it would just be too labor intensive to set a bunch of those smaller uh, granite boulders. So I'm going to bring in another stone. These were really the two that caught my eye. Over here, we have something called a Pennsylvania colonial wall stone. And then over here, we have the huckleberry wall stone. Now, both of these I really love. The only thing is as I looked at them, the Pennsylvania looked too uniform. And we really have, this is where I always refer back to the brief. This is a natural organic ode to the Northwest. I'm just not gonna find a Pennsylvania colonial wall stone anywhere. So even though I love this, I would have this in my home, I would edge gardens. This is our choice. And as I was talking to Ryan, um, he was just kind of driving home and I, I don't know, just kind of affirming my choice because he was saying that these actually just come out of our neighbors to the north. They're coming down from Canada. All right, my friends, that is it. We've had a marathon couple days of shopping and gathering materials to bring this garden to life. I hope you've enjoyed this little behind the scenes. Um, a peek into my thought process as we build out this floral natural woodland from scratch. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.